In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to put propositions into logical form. The purpose of putting a proposition into logical form is so that you can clearly see the terms of a proposition. We want to see what the terms are, the subject term and the predicate term. Also, we want to determine the quantity and quality of a proposition. You need to know these things about a proposition in order to fully understand a proposition. If you don't know what the terms are or what the quantity or quality of a proposition are, then you don't fully understand the proposition. And so the whole point is to understand the proposition because if you don't understand what somebody is talking about, how are you going to tell whether it's true or false? So these are, it's an important thing to be able to put a proposition into logical form. That doesn't mean we put all propositions into logical form, but we should be able to if we wanted to. So logical form, you're going to have a quantifier, which is all, no, some. You're gonna have the subject term in brackets, the brackets. You're going to have a copula, which is the verb to be. And then you're gonna have the predicate term in brackets that is putting something into logical form we can see all the major elements of the proposition now the copula copula in latin means a rope or cord and it is the verb to be because this verb to be it acts as the cord or the rope joining together the subject term and the predicate term. And when we put something in logical form, we're going to be using the present tense form of the verb to be. And that is am, is, and are. Am is probably the most, tr the trickiest one that you'll use the least. So the steps to putting a proposition into logical form are these are these. First, you must show the quantifier. You're going to expose the quantifier if it's not exposed. You're going to put brackets around the terms because you want to clearly see the terms. And then you're going to expose the copula because sometimes the verb to be, you can't see it. But every proposition has the verb to be because the verb to be is telling existence. And when somebody says a proposition, they are affirming something, they're affirming the existence of something or denying existence of something. So every proposition has a copula, but sometimes you can't see it. So look at this proposition right here. Dogs are animals. Now, if I was going to put this into logical form, it already has the copula right here. All it needs now is the quantifier which is all right here. And it needs brackets around the subject term and the predicate term. So here is the subject term and here is the predicate term. Okay, this is an A statement. We can clearly see this is an A statement now. If you're unfamiliar with the four types of propositions, then you should review that lecture I did on the four propositions from Aristotle's logic because you should know those before you start talking you start learning about logical form or else you're going to be confused uh, throughout the rest of this. So this a proposition is now in logical form. Now look at this one. Every dog is an animal. Now for most of these propositions you just have to use your common sense and just your basic knowledge of English of the, of the language okay because that that's what's going to be required when you put something in the logical form so when we look at every dog is an animal what do we mean by this every dog are we talking about some dogs are we talking about all dogs we mean all dogs so that's the quantifier that's going to be used we are going to say all dogs are animals Okay, so here we had every dog is an animal. Is is the copula. 
I can keep that. It doesn't really matter. Your sentence doesn't have to sound per grammatically perfect. But I changed it to R just, just for the convenience of it, just because it matches better concerning the number. All dogs are animals. But if I said all dogs is animals, that wouldn't sound as correct. But for doing logic and putting something into logical form, it still works because you still see the copula and you still see the terms and you see the quantifier. How about this next one? This next one here. A few cats are blue. Now you have to ask yourself, a few cats, what is, what is this? This is why you should know those four propositions already. Is it some? Is it all? Or is it no? A few cats. This would be some. A few is not, does not mean all. You're not talking about all cats. You only mean a few, which is another word for that is some. That's the quantifier that we're going to use because that matches one of the propositions that we know. So the purpose of logical form, I should have stated this in the beginning. I already stated the purpose, but here's something to add on here. You want to turn any proposition that you see into one of the four propositions, the A, E, I, or O. That's what you're doing. You are turning any proposition that you encounter. And there's a lot of different ones. A lot of propositions have words you've never even seen before. And so you want to turn every one of those propositions into an A, E, I, or O. That, that's the mission. So this, a few cats are blue. We have to ask ourselves, hey, what is, what is this? Is this a I, O, E? Is it some? Is it all? This one clearly is some. So it's going to be an I proposition. So we say some cats, cats is the subject term. It's in brackets. And we have the R. Now notice the R right here, the copula was already exposed. So I didn't need to expose it. And then we have blue things, which is the predicate term. Now terms, remember, can be long. They can be one word or they could be 50 words. All right, you don't want it to be 50. If somebody gives you a term that's 50 words, chances are they don't know what they're talking about because terms should be short and sweet, but sometimes they're not. Okay, so blue things is the predicate term. Now exposing the copula. This is what we need to do when we don't see the verb to be. In other words, we don't see an am, we don't see an is, and we don't see an are. But we have, to, we have to expose that in order to clearly see the subject term and the predicate term. Okay, that's, what is, that's what's happening. Now, with these sentences that I'm giving you, these are easy. These are simple sentences because we're just learning this. But with real sentences that you find in, a, in a, a book, especially a book of philosophy, they're not easy like this. And so it really helps if you have a habit of seeing the verb to be, in other words, of seeing the copula. So boys run. What we're gonna do in order to expose the copula, in order to see that verb to be, is we are going to turn the predicate term into a relative clause, okay? In other words, a relative clause is just a big adjective. All right, that's all we're going to, it's not necessary that you fully understand uh, the nature of a relative clause or, or, you know, the definition of it or, you know, that, that's English class. This is, this is logic. All that's as important right now is that you are able to do this, that you get a habit of doing this. So if I have boys run, you're going to say, oh, first of all, when you say boys run, we can assume that the person means all boys. If they didn't mean all boys, then they should have said it. They should have said a few or some or something like that. We're going to assume all. So, but context can change that. Okay. If we, somebody says boys run and we say all boys, but then we read further on that they didn't mean that, then we change it. 
If we find out further that they were only talking about a few boys, then we should change this because we got further info. We we acquired further information. Or if we know the person that's saying boys run, and and they see that we're taking it as all boys, and then they tell us, hey, I didn't mean that. Then we need to change it because we want to get what their meaning is. We want to understand what they are saying. We don't want to try to trick people. Okay. And we don't want to try to trap people in their speech. We want what they really mean. That is a rule of logic and it's a rule of a correct thinker. And if somebody who wants the truth. So for boys run, we're just going to assume they're talking about all boys unless we get further information. And then notice with boys run, there's no copula. Where's the verb to be? It's not there, but it is there. It's just hidden. It's implied. And it's our job when we put something in logical form to expose it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say all boys are that which run. See that? That which. All you're going to do is you're going to add these relative pronouns right here. That which run. And that's going to turn this part into a relative clause all right so all boys are that which run it's a little uncomfortable at first but i mean after you do it a few times it, it'll start to get easy on in a, easier and it'll start to get habitual now look at birds fly there's no copula there's no verb to be how do we turn it in how do we expose the copula all birds are that which fly now we clearly see that the subject term and the predicate term and the copula right here. We clearly see everything. Some children cry. Now we already have the quantifier. The quantifier is some. We already have it. So we don't have to add that. Some children cry. What does that turn into? Some children are that which cry. Okay, so we turn the pre we turn the predicate. So children is the subject term, and then we turn the predicate term into a relative clause. Now I'm just going to go over a couple propositions that are a bit troublesome. That's why you have this 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 skull right here because it can be some danger but it doesn't mean it's bad these are just propositions that we use all the time that we have to just know they have a they they have to be treated in a different way than the other propositions so we have socrates is a man socrates is a man there's only one socrates we're talking about socrates the ancient Greek philosopher. There's only one of them. Now we could be tempted to turn Socrates as a man into a particular proposition. In other words, some, because there's only one, but that would be a mistake. When we talk about Socrates, we are talking about all of Socrates. So that Socrates as a man is a singular proposition in other words, there's only one of them. So we turn Socrates is a man into an A proposition. See that? So Socrates is a man becomes all Socrates is a man. Okay. It would make no sense if we said some Socrates is a man. You would like his arm is some, but it, Socrates is arm B Socrates. No, that would be the arm of Socrates. So we cannot split some singular thing like Socrates. All right. So if we have a, a noun, a proper noun that is naming some particular thing, those become the uh, universal propositions. So San Francisco is a city. There's only one San Francisco, the one I'm thinking about. And so because it's one, it becomes all San Francisco is a city. Okay. 
you wouldn't say you wouldn't take a part of San Francisco and say that's San Francisco. It is in San Francisco, but it's not San Francisco in and of itself. So here we have a proper noun, and so this is a singular proposition, and it turns into an A statement. Now we have Bill is a painter. There's only one Bill, the Bill that I'm thinking of, and he's a painter. This is a singular proposition. We have one particular person, but just because it's particular, that doesn't mean we turn it into an I statement or an O statement. We don't turn it into a particular statement because when we talk about Bill, we're talking about all of Bill, not just his arm or his leg. Because even if we were talking about his arm or his leg, that wouldn't be Bill. That would be the leg or the arm of Bill. So when you have a proper noun like Bill and you're talking about a particular person, that turns in to an A statement or an A proposition. All Bill is a painter. All is the quantifier. Bill, remember the quantifier is telling the quantity of the proposition. Bill is the subject term and we have the copula is. And then we have a painter, which is the predicate term. Next one, the ambiguous proposition, all S is not P. This is one of the most common statements that we make. All S is not P. The S stands for the subject term and the P stands for the predicate term. This is ambiguous. And the ambiguous involves a term that can have two meanings. That's what that means for, for us particular, for logic. It's a term that can have two meanings. Okay, so we have all books are not bad. Well, for us right now, ambiguous is a proposition that can have two meanings. You're gonna see that right now. All books are not bad. So. Now you may be thinking right now that this is an A proposition, but it's not. Remember, the A proposition would be all books are bad, but this one has not in here. This is not like a, this is not one of the four propositions. It's not an A, E, I, or O. So we have all books are not bad. We have to ask ourselves, what does this mean? All books are not bad. Well, one thing it can mean no books are bad. If somebody just said straight and plainly, all books are not bad, then that would mean no books are bad. But what if somebody said this proposition, what if they said it like this, all books are not bad? Would they still mean that no books are bad? No, because of the way they said it. The way they said it, where they put the accent can determine what type of proposition it is. So when somebody says, all books are not bad. So if somebody's saying that all books are bad and then somebody replies, all books are not bad, then what do they mean by that? What they mean is some books are not bad. So based on how you say the proposition and the context, in other words, the environment in which it was said, that can determine what, what type of proposition it is. So this one right here, some books are not bad. That's an O proposition. That's why this is ambiguous. It's ambiguous because it can be two propositions. All right, it can be two. It can either be this one right here, the E proposition, or it can be the O proposition but it's only gonna be one of them at a time. So when somebody says this, they, they mean one of these, all right? You just have to figure out from the context uh, or just what type of proposition it is, you have to determine which one it is, whether it's the E or the O.